Well, hello everyone and welcome back to another Theme Park Obsession video. My name is Dylan and thank you so much for tuning back into the channel. Today I'm hanging out at California Adventure because I wanted to talk about another wish list. You know, we did that with Galaxy's Edge, my wish list and what I would like to see or maybe change sometime in the future. You know, a little armchair imagineering. But today, let's do it with California Adventure and the entire park. Let's sit up and spark a conversation about what could be at California Adventure in the future what may be changed to make the park even better and a whole lot more. So how about you and I let's dive right in. Decided to walk into the parks through downtown Disney opted out of the tram. I, yeah, I usually don't take the tram until the evening after like a long day. I usually like getting my steps in at the start of the day. Yeah, I had so much fun doing that Star Wars Galaxy's Edge video on what could be the possibilities of the future, what I would like to see. So, you know, why not do it for all of California Adventure? Yeah, I mean, the possibilities for California Adventure can be absolutely endless. You can do so much to this park and what's funny is there's already been so much that has happened to this park over the years. I mean, just Buena Vista Street alone is something that has literally come from absolutely nothing. The, the former entrance of California Adventure was night and day difference from what it looks like now. And it shows how creative you can be with such a small space. I mean, the front entrance is not that big, but the Imagineers created something that was very reminiscent to Main Street USA at Disneyland. It still has that same feel and charm, but slightly different because this is a different theme park. So yeah, you can do so much. So let's cruise around the park and armchair Imagineer, let's have some fun. Now, when it comes to Buena Vista Street, I think this particular land is nearly perfect. There's really not much more you can add to it. It's it's really good the way it is. If anything, I would say the only thing that I would do to Buena Vista Street is add some more streetmosphere, some entertainment, like the news uh, boys that would come out on the red car trolley or something maybe in the same time period that they could do really creative. Yeah, I think that would be the only thing, really. Just some more entertainment here on Buena Vista Street. They could even expand on the idea of the citizens of Buena Vista Street. There's already a few characters on Buena Vista Street as it is today, but they can add to that and create even a more livable space. You know, who else lives here on Buena Vista Street? I wouldn't even be opposed to maybe another set piece out here, like another prop that's like in front of Oswald's. Other than that though, this land is nearly perfect. I would, you know what? No, it's, it's perfect. It is really good. I absolutely love Buena Vista Street. It has charm to it. You get that nice cozy feeling when you walk into the park and that really can't be beat. But let's move on to a land a little bit more troublesome and that is Hollywood Land. I don't mind a land themed around Hollywood. I mean, again, this park is named California Adventure, so the land should reflect its overall theme. And since Buena Vista Street is its neighbor, I wouldn't be opposed to this just staying Hollywood land, but being more in the time period of when Walt Disney was in Hollywood. I would continue that theming that we see in Buena Vista Street, that art style on the buildings and whatnot, and blend it in over here into Hollywood land. So then, things make a little bit more sense and the transition into each of the lands is a little bit easier. Because right now it's a little bit mishmash, there's a lot happening and there's still a lot of leftovers from DCA 1.0. I mean the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire building still stands and of course the old Muppet Vision Theater building is still here. It's now Mickey's Philhar Magic. But you see what I'm saying? The architecture here is a little topsy-turvy, it, it changes. You know, there's a little bit of the old school Hollywood here. And then once you get to the Hollywood Studios section of this land, then it's just like a hodgepodge. You can totally do a Hollywood backlot from the 1930s, but make it look like that. And you could even do some really cool restaurant and cafe ideas. Of, hey, you know, the cafes on all of these studio backlots, which I've been uh, near some of the cafes, like at Universal Studios Hollywood. I've been able to walk backstage there. And, you know, they can do something like that, but obviously in the same time period as Buena Vista Street. So it all kind of like makes sense in this particular corner of the park. And you could really be creative with the space, especially the show buildings for the attractions. Made it inside the Avengers uh, shop here in the Hollywood backlot. But look, I mean, 
mean, this is nice, this is a shopping opportunity, but this building can be used for something else. And how neat would it be to maybe have a special effects show, similar to what they've done at Universal Studios Hollywood, but how they would do effects back then, in the 1930s and 40s. You know, maybe do a new rendition of the great movie ride. There's a lot of space back here that is just kind of used for either this or backstage facility that they can consolidate and maybe make one big giant show building. Yeah, instead of the refreshment corner, how about a 1930s slash 40s back lot cafe that the stars would eat in backstage? That would be so cool. And it would completely change this area tremendously. Again, even with Monsters Incorporated, the show building is back behind this facade. I would be in favor for that attraction going for something maybe original. Even more space over here too with this empty building. This uh, I've only been in here a couple times when they had the arcade in there for Mad Tea Party and Electronica. But another big space for something. Yeah, like a great movie ride or maybe like a classic Mickey Mouse ride back here would be really, really cool. I know we got Mickey and Minnie's going into Disneyland, but maybe something more about the movies and Hollywood theme. Uh, would be really nice. I, I don't know. What, what do you guys think? What should be done to Hollywood Land? There's also been a lot of rumors going around that this would just be more Avengers stuff. And I could see that, but at the same time, I feel like the Avengers stuff can go behind where Avengers Campus sits right now, and it doesn't have to be in this particular area of the park. And they can blend this a little bit easier into Avengers Campus instead of just being a plain wall on this side. And you know, I do like this sign over here, by the way, the Walt Disney Studios sign. Yeah, it would be nice to have more of this kind of scattered around the land. I do like that sign up there. I believe it's like a Coca-Cola advertisement. But yeah, it, I think a 1930s, 1940s Hollywood backlot, something that Walt Disney would maybe work on back in the day, that would be really nice over here. And then transitioning into the Avengers campus, a more modern aesthetic and that can be done really easily again because the Imagineers to be incredibly creative with the space that they have. Now when it comes to Cars Land I think this is another land that is pretty much perfect the way it is and you know the way it's designed and built it's kind of going to be timeless so I don't really think I would add anything really to this. If anything I would maybe do shaded meet and greets because a lot of the times you're standing out in the sun to meet some of your favorite characters from the movie here and that would be really cool if they built maybe like a garage or something that you can be in to see your characters or maybe even animatronic characters. But aside from that, as far as any other attractions coming to Cars Land, yeah, I don't know. That one's actually a really difficult one because I don't really know what else they would add to this. Maybe another dark ride of some sorts, but I mean, they would have to put that back behind this mountain range, which there is a lot of space back there for something new. Uh, but I, again, they might use that for some Avengers Campus expansion down the line. Now I'm just gonna kind of skim over the Pacific Wharf area because this does serve as a very good kind of food court for a lot of guests here at the park. There's three different options in this particular location and it's kind of tucked off to the side, off the parade corridor. So I really wouldn't change this all that much. I mean, if anything, one, I would remove the Christmas decorations, one, and two, I think maybe it would be nice to expand the waterway if they could in some shape or form and maybe put a, a big boat right here as a prop because this is supposed to be the wharf like up north in San Francisco. So yeah, I think that would all, that's really all I would add to this. Yeah, nice, a nice fishing boat right here. Ah, uh, yes, another, I would say, troublesome area of the park that has gone through a lot of changes and that is the pier. Now Pixar Pier, it used to be Paradise Pier and who knows what it will be in the future. I'm sure it'll change again sometime. Yeah, I don't mind the Pixar theme here. It is very vibrant and it is really fun, especially for the kids because before the pier's color aesthetic was a little bit darker, but I didn't mind that either. To be completely honest, even though I do like Pixar Pier, I don't think this particular section of the park needed to be rethemed to add more characters over here, give each attraction a character. I, I don't really think that that was necessary. Now, when California Adventure first opened up, the case with the characters was definitely there. There wasn't a lot of Disney characters in the park, and I understand why they wanted to add more to the park to make it more appealing to the masses. But when it came to the pier, the pier, I don't think necessarily needed the characters. It just needed better looking things because the thrill, the thrill rides are here. There's plenty for people to do on the pier. And I don't think that was ever the problem. I just think it was the look and feel of the pier that really kind of hurt it. And now with that said, I do like the addition of Toy Story Mania. I thought 
that was a very good decision and yes it filled that little void of adding uh, some characters to the pier but the look of the building is what really caught my eye when it opened i love this style of architecture and i feel like if they would have continued that throughout the rest of the pier and really made it more of a disney quality then the pier wouldn't have suffered and they wouldn't have i don't think had to rethemed this to Pixar Pier. When California Adventure first opened, the pier definitely had all of the thrill rides. It was the one land that had the most rides in the entire park, but it was probably by far the ugliest land in the park. I'm gonna use Animal Kingdom as an example. Animal Kingdom strives at like making you actually believe that you are backpacking in a far off place in a far off land you know, going through Asia or parts of the Africa section of the park. It's just beautiful. Those sections of Animal Kingdom don't need intellectual property for them to really tell a specific story or make the guests believe that they're someplace in a different period of time. It works because they spent the money on the particular space. Now behind me here at Pixar Pier, well, I was I should say Paradise Pier in the original idea. They didn't really spend a lot of money. They spent maybe a dollar fifty. And I think that is one of the biggest reasons why the pier failed. But if the rest of the pier looked like this, like this Toy Story Mania building, I don't think it would have fell as hard on its knees. If it was me and I had to retheme this area to Pixar, I would do so without making it like each its, its own like neighborhood. It's again, it's very mishmash like it is in Hollywood section of the park. Like in an old original concept, I would have continued this architecture right over here to the carousel and enclosed the entire thing so you have a, a lot of shade and it's indoors and it could be very unique to the pier. And see, this side of the pier is a perfect example of how you can take the Pixar characters and blend them together really nicely with this particular architecture. So if I was to add anything or change anything to the pier, I would continue this aesthetic all the way down to the Critter Carousel and to the Incredicoaster and make the Incredicoaster's queue space indoors. One of the biggest downsides to waiting in line for the Incredicoaster is that you're out in the sun and the shade doesn't really do much. And over here at Emotional Whirlwind, I, you know what I would have done is a walkthrough attraction. Have you ever been to a seaside amusement park or a pier and gone through a fun house? How cool would that be, but Disney's version, you know, obviously a little bit nicer and uh, a lot more efficient for the amount of people that are coming here to the park. But I think a seaside fun house would fit perfect over here. Maybe in addition to the, you know, emotional whirlwind, you could stick it behind backstage somewhere over here. There's plenty of room to expand. There's enough space. There's enough space back there to do a little something. And like, yeah, wouldn't a fun house be kind of fun? And this is another thing that's kind of perplexing as to why they didn't continue with this sort of aesthetic for the rest of the pier because you have the Pixar pier which has all these different colors and everything going on and all of a sudden you go back to the old style what they were originally going to do and I, I don't know I really like this and because I really like this I wouldn't change this at all the Paradise Gardens food area is very very nice and they did a really spectacular job on taking what was a very gnarly looking space and turning it into a beautiful place to sit and relax have a bite to eat and a nice drink. But working over here to Goofy Sky School, I would take down Goofy Sky School and do a really cool dark ride over here. Yeah, there's a lot of space back here, especially if you were to take out the Corn Dog Castle and the Seaside Souvenirs. Wouldn't it be really nice to have a very unique original dark ride back here? Or you could even theme it to characters. But at a lot of these seaside amusement parks, they have those kind of haunted house style rides or they have those really classic old school dark rides that you see at some of the carnivals. Again, Disney could do their own version of that, obviously a lot nicer. Something that's like in Fantasyland. Those, all those rides in Fantasyland are very uh, seaside amusement park-ish. And it's funny because those simplistic dark rides are some of the most popular here at the Disneyland Resort. They really can do a lot with the pier, and I'm sure they will in the future. There's still a lot of work to be done in this particular area, I'm sure. And I'm sure the Imagineers have really thought long and hard about what would work down the line. You, you never know. You never know what's going to happen. What do you guys think? What, what would you do to the pier? Because this is, to me, this is one of the biggest like flex spaces in the entire park. And with that, we're winding down to our last section of the park that I wanted to talk about, and it's this very beautiful section of the park. And there's Grizzly Peak, I would say right behind Cars Land. This area is just so pretty. 
It's very peaceful. And now that the trees have grown in since the park had opened in 2001, it really is something very immersive. It really does feel like you are in a redwood forest. And speaking of redwood, I made it here to the Redwood Creek Challenge Trail. Watch out for the skunks. I've always thought that this place could maybe be torn out for a nice compact mine cart roller coaster. You know, maybe something very similar to what's at Hong Kong Disneyland, the uh, Grizzly Mountain Coaster, but on a smaller scale, obviously because of the space that is very limited here. And you could really play a lot with the theming, kind of dip into the gold mining aspect of this land. On the side of Grizzly River Run, there are some gold mining kind of hints and little Easter eggs scattered throughout the attraction. And the same could be said for over here for this mine cart coaster. Is you're literally in one of the carts they would use to mine a lot of gold and silver. Having a mine cart coaster, really nice compact mine cart coaster would add so much thrill to this section of the park. Even do like a nice drop track section and then somewhere in the ride, that would be a lot of fun. But it would add to what's already here, which is the water ride, the Grizzly River Run, and of course the uh, flight simulator ride soaring over the world or soaring over California, depending on what time of year you visit, which Personally, I think they should always keep it soaring over California because again, this is a park after, named after California. It's California Adventure. It's themed after California. So yeah, let's keep it soaring over California. I feel like out of all the lands that originally opened with California Adventures, this one in particular stands out as something that came out of this rubble of mess, you know, like as the one gem in the park and it really has stood the test of time. You know what else I would really like to see is a new water feature. They could do a really cool piece of rock work right here that you walk through like a nice cave and the water spills on top and over it into the Grizzly River Run. That would be a really nice kind of uh, water feature that would just add to the land's aesthetic. It'd be kind of cool to walk through a big, massive cave. Now this space is also very challenging because of the Grand Californian Hotel that sits on its perimeter. But like with Buena Vista Street, the Imagineers can be extremely creative with what they have available to play with. As far as the Grizzly River Run attraction goes, I, I would add, <laughs> I've been saying this for a very long time, I would add animatronic bears to the attraction. Again, similar to what we see at Hong Kong Disneyland, wouldn't that be really cool? You just traversing the flume and all of a sudden you see a few bears, maybe a little couple cubs or something in there. That would be really nice to see. And yeah, like I said, when it comes to soaring over the world, I'd much rather have it be a permanent soaring over California attraction. It's soaring over California right now at the time of filming this because it's the food and wine festival. But all Disney has to do is go in there and refilm the entire show sequence. And that would be nice because they can update the visuals like they have with soaring around the world and just make it a permanent California attraction. The way it looks right now is beautiful. I really do love how they retheme this entire space to make it blend a lot easier with the Grizzly Peak. This is the Grizzly Peak airfield. So yeah, see, it makes sense. But with that, we've made it back to Buena Vista Street and our lap around the park is complete. There's still a lot more we can talk about, but I think that video would probably be four hours long and it would be longer than any of the Lord of the Rings movies. I really love California Adventure. It continues to grow on me every single year. You know, I've been, I've seen this park go through all of its phases, all of its changes. I've seen every single one. I was here with my best friend and his family on cast member preview day before the public in 2001. When I was younger, we were able to come inside the park and check it out for the very first time. I've seen it when it went through its transition from the DCA 1.0 to DCA 2.0. I've seen the addition of Pixar Pier and Avengers Campus. And you know what? I've even worked here. I put about two and a half years in before I transferred over to Disneyland. So this park, I've, I've seen and been able to experience so much. I'm so grateful and fortunate for that. And that's why this park means a little bit more to me than the average Joe Schmo. But what's fun about making these videos is not only do I get to talk about all this kind of stuff with you and Armchair Imagineer, but it's fun to look back on videos like this and see if any of those things came true because California Adventure is still not done. Just like Walt said, Disneyland will never be complete. And that also goes for California Adventure. You know, as long as there's imagination left in the world, as long as they still wanna push and strive for greatness and really dream up some very cool additions to the park, this park will never be complete. It'll always be 
uh, evolving and especially California Adventure. There's still so much work to be done here. And I think if they do things like Buena Vista Street and Cars Land, they keep that trajectory. This is gonna be just a, continue to be a stellar park. And you know what, it's, I, I can't wait for the future. But with that said, that is gonna do it for today's video from DCA. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and smash the thumbs up button. And if you're new to the channel and you love these videos about theme parks and a bunch of other theme park news, hit that subscribe button and notification bell to stay up to date on every time I post a new video because yeah, I post new videos all the time. If you wanna help support the channel even more in my journey here on YouTube, I'll leave the link down below for my Patreon account. I'll be adding more perks as time goes on. We're gonna start going live on the Patreon. I have a secret Instagram account just for Patreon members only where I post updates. I'm gonna post daily updates there. So again, yeah, if you wanna help support the channel even more, follow the Patreon link. Also, I have a regular Instagram account for everyone else. I'll leave that link down below in the description. Be sure to follow that because I post updates there all the time that I don't normally post here on YouTube. But besides that, I hope you have a beautiful day. I mean, look at today is a gorgeous day in Southern California. So I hope you're having a gorgeous day as well. Evening, night, whatever it is. And I'll see you next time in the parks. Bye.